I'm standing on top of the Shanghai Mansion, which in 1949 was known as the Broadway Mansion. And it's a very nice place to snap a photo of the famous bun. It's very convenient for foreign journalists to do so because this building housed the Shanghai Foreign Correspondents Club, and many reporters actually lived here. This is a photo taken here by American journalist Harrison Foreman. Buildings on the Bund look similar, but the picture reveals the old Shanghai. Poor men's sampans fill Suzhou Creek. Foreign warships moored in the Huangpu River. Photos taken by Harrison Foreman on the ground were more revealing, like this one. That scene was witnessed by another journalist who wrote an article titled, This Happened on the Bund in Shanghai. He described what he saw in disbelief that in these days of UNRRA, CNRRA, ECA, and other aids to China, an incident like this could happen on Shanghai's main street. Rampant corruption, runaway inflation, the city was in total chaos. And despite the inpouring of foreign aid, the great majority of Chinese people living in Shanghai were leading miserable lives. But why? Time went back three years. In 1946, the ruling nationalist government restarted the civil war against the communists, while the country was still recovering from deep turmoil caused by World War II. Most of the country's wealth went into the government's war effort. Without the people's support, the nationalists suffered defeat after defeat. By 1949, the nationalist government had lost control of half of China and most of its American trained and equipped elite troops. Military defeat brought along more economic squeeze. In an effort to stabilize the crumbling economy, the government attempted to institute monetary reforms, which forced people to hand in their precious metals for the new paper money. The reform was a complete disaster. Any rickshaw rider may be carrying millions of dollars. For even the smallest payroll, the currency needed offers quite a delivery problem. No shopper who hopes to buy anything goes without bundles of what it takes. $18 million, for instance, Chinese that is, for a carton of cigarettes. And China's poor little working girl can hardly carry her half month's pay. And it's a simple matter to drop a few million and wonder if it's worth the effort to pick it up. What did the government do then? More executions, more squeeze, and they had their secret plan in place. I'm standing on the rooftop of the AIA building on the Bund. In 1949, this was the North China Daily News Building. In December 1948, around midnight, a British editor named George Vine noticed something peculiar from his fifth floor office window. He saw workers carrying heavy packages out of that building, which was then the Central Bank Building. With soldiers standing by, they loaded those heavy goods onto a ship moored in the Huangpu River. George Vine quickly realized that was the treasury's gold they were trying to move. What he witnessed was one of several major efforts of the nationalist government to sneak gold out of Shanghai. When the news spread, bank runs followed. All hope left among the people toward the nationalists drained into the gutter. Those were the last days of a crumbling old Shanghai. Even the American consulate general of Shanghai John Cabot wrote these words. The rich lived lavishly and ostentatiously. The poor were utterly miserable. It didn't take much observation to realize why communism had such a strong appeal in the circumstances. When a government disregards its people's welfare, history will make its own choice.